My name is Michael Baumfort and I teach sustainable agriculture at Kwantlen Polytechnic University in southwestern British Columbia. I love to teach about disease suppressive soils because they illustrate the fascinating complexity of the web of life in agroecosystems. There's an amazing world in the soil beneath our feet. Healthy soils teem with insects, earthworms, nematodes, fungi, and bacteria. Most of these organisms are benign or beneficial, but some are agricultural pests or cause crop disease. Some soil microbes can inhibit the act activity of the pathogenic microbes that cause crop disease. When enough of these beneficial microbes are present in a soil, they can reduce or eliminate crop damage, even when a susceptible crop host is grown in the presence of a pathogen. The soil is suppressive because it supports beneficial microbes that suppress soil-borne disease. So what does this look like? As an example, consider this long-term study on no a no-till farm in central Washington, where spring wheat has been grown every year without rotation since 1997. Sounds like a recipe for disease, and indeed, bear patches started to appear in the wheat in 1999, three years into the study. The pathogen causing these circular dead spots was identified as a particular strain of Rhizoctonia solani. In 1999 and 2000, the bear patches covered about 8% of the area planted to wheat. 2001 was a drought year, so bear patches couldn't be distinguished from dry spots. By 2002, the bare patches were covering 18% of the area planted to wheat. This was looking bad. In 2003, something interesting started to happen. The area affected by bare patches started to shrink. They covered 15% of the wheat area that year, when the picture was taken, 13% the next, then dropped down to 7%, 6%, and just 1% in 2007. By 2008, they were gone entirely, and they haven't come back. The host, spring wheat, is still being grown. The pathogen, Rhizoctonia solani, strain AG8, is still present, but there's no observable disease. A microbial population has developed in the soil that inhibits the pathogen. It has become a suppressive soil. This example comes from a report by Schillinger and Pollitz, who are scientists at Washington State University and at the USDA's Agricultural Research Station in Pullman, Washington. The pattern that they describe, where a disease outbreak is followed by disease suppression, mediated by beneficial soil microbes, has been observed for many different crop diseases in many different soils. In February, I'm going to share other examples and observations of suppressive soils at workshops hosted by Agri-Energy Resources in Indiana and Iowa. We'll talk about the emerging understanding of suppressive soils and ways in which farmers can bring the living soil over to their side in the fight against crop disease. Join us if you can. It's going to be fun.